Meanwhile, there were many episodes where Ripcon will leave the Rangers alone because he wants to fight against Brody at his full strength. Ironically, Ripcon's actions were praised by Galvanax, since it did increase the viewing on times where it featured Ripcon, to Odious's annoyance. Many times, Galvanax spoke to an evil entity he served. That entity glowed in crimson light. Apparently, he is recovering from good magic he has suffered in the past. The evil entity has fought Adam before with a team of rangers organized by the Sentinel Knight. In the next episode, the rangers were starting to feel a bit laid back and were not too enthusiastic about training. Adam also told the rangers that ninjas should always be a few steps ahead. When a ninja feels satisfied during a fight, that's when a ninja will fall. This sparks an idea in Sarah's head that would make things interesting for the team. She tried to conjure a zord for the new ninja star but keep on failing. Feeling upset for not being able to create a Zord yet, Sarah decided to go for a walk. Sarah has been focusing a lot on building a new Zord, but was at a creative halt. Thanks to Boom, he was able to contact another veteran ranger, TJ from Turbo and in Space. He was teleported there to help Sarah to produce a new Zord. However, TJ is in an astral form. His teleportation to this dimension will not last. TJ met up with Sarah. While she said she was drawing inspiration from Lightspeed Rescue, TJ emphasized she shouldn't. She should make whatever feels right to her. That was how Captain Mitchell from Lightspeed worked. While speaking to Sarah, it was noted that Sarah has been quite in your face about how smart she is. It was to the point that it was a running gag that she's so annoying about it without realizing it. But her friends still accepted her. Sarah had a heart-to-heart -to, -heart to TJ about not wanting to live in Billy's shadow as he is the smartest person anyone around her ever knew. She always gets compared to him. Others bullied and isolated her on Aquatar because they think she only have good grades and is where she is because of her father's influence and reputation rather than because she is intelligent and works hard for it. TJ encouraged her to loosen up and tried her best not to pay attention to others' judgmental views. TJ said he gets compared to Tommy a lot when using turbo powers. But he parked through it and showed he is just as a competent leader, as shown in space. Sarah decides it would be most useful to make something that can fly into space since they have an aerial mode and ground mode. The next battle makes more sense to be in space. She started to think about the coolest futuristic swords, thus TJ suggested they should go to the planetarium to draw upon more inspirations, accompanied by Calvin and Haley. Meanwhile, Preston was inspired by Adam's words on not slacking. Brody decides on helping Preston to meditate in magic. Preston revealed the magic has a huge disadvantage. The things he created is not permanent and it will turn back to normal after half an hour. He tries to meditate because he needs to focus on how magic does good and use his emotions to control his mystical powers. Preston sometimes struggles with this because he used to think of magic as pranks since he has been duped by his classmates. While the four were drawn into different attractions of the museum, TJ, Calvin, Haley, and Sarah noticed that this museum is like a warped version of Earth. People living peacefully. The civilians are very nice, full of hope, and it motivated the rangers to resolve in protecting these people. TJ said that his dimension is the same. Poor civilians trapped there without knowing who they really are. TJ wished that he could help them other than just protecting them. At the same time, the people are receiving weird silver balloons by mysterious men. Preston started to have a heart-to-heart -heart with Brody, asking why did Brody want to become a ranger. Brody said since he was a child, his father has been giving him training because of Brody's interest in martial arts. But Adam forbid Brody from being a ranger. Adam felt that being a ranger took his teenage years. Adam wants his son to have a normal life before becoming a ranger. Preston said he understands where Adam is coming from. When Preston's mother, Kimberly, was having a long-distance relationship with her ex-boyfriend, her love was sabotaged by the Machine Empire. In order to attack the Zeo Power Rangers, the Machine Empire forged a breakup letter. The Zeo Rangers actually fell for it, and before she knew it, he started seeing someone else. She was heartbroken by this and tried to move on. And this is one of the burdens of being a ranger. There will never be a normal life. Is Brody ready for this? Brody finally understood why Adam did not want him to be a ranger until he's older. Suddenly, they were alerted by Boom that there are multiple giant Galvanaxes across the city again. The two rangers used their personal zords to fend off the giant Galvanaxes. Galvanax chuckled at the rangers panicking, hoping if the rangers will escalate in retaliation to energize more ninja stars. While fending off the giants, Preston notices something is off about these Galvanaxes and notices they are actually illusions. Brody used the plant and wind technique to create a kite 
and Preston gave him a lift. Brody will act as Preston's satellite as Preston tried to detect the source of the magic. Meanwhile, the other three rangers finally found the resolve to produce an auxiliary zord onto the ninja star. They created the astro zord. Calvin cheered as he saw the saucer image on the ninja star, while Haley and Sarah looked at how differently the zord looked than when they had imagined. Sarah said it looks nothing like the astro mech zord, nor the mega shuttle. TJ said how cool it would be if those swords knew how to spin. That comment persuaded Haley and Sarah to appreciate the Astro Zord. Sarah said that Astro Zord has the power of star slinging and satellite stuttering. The other rangers meet up with Preston and Brody after they were alerted by Redbot about the giant Galvin axes. They track the sources of these illusions thanks to Sarah's new Astro Zord power. These illusions are created by balloons passed out by the mysterious men in the earlier episode. Preston said the balloons act as magical satellites to broadcast the Galvin axes. Sarah said the Astro Zord they had created has the power of stuttering satellites. So Sarah uses the Astro Zord wave of satellite stuttering, and Preston uses his magic to amplify the wave, which cancels out the Galvin axe illusions. The monster behind it was revealed and was taken down. Ripcon then appears and challenges Brody to a duel, but the monster was revived in its second life as a giant. Brody promises to fight him later. The monster showed that it knows how to fly. Sarah tried to summon the Astro Zord, but it did not come. So, the rangers used the Ninja Steel Mega Dragon Zord mode to give chase. Once they reached the atmosphere, Sarah's Astro Zord finally showed up. They fought on the moon and destroyed the monster with Star Slinger attack. As the rangers celebrated their newly found Zord power with TJ, they returned home with Brody for getting his planned duel against Ripcon. The rangers thanked TJ as his time with the ranger has ended. TJ approached Adam and embraced him. He told Adam he shouldn't blame himself for what has happened with the other rangers. Adam forced a smile but he still feels like it's his fault. TJ is then teleported back to his dimension. Why is Adam feeling so guilty? Time and time and again, the Astro Zord proved to be a powerful ally. In the episodes, we learn more about the Ninja Steel. We understand that the powers of Ninja Steel doesn't belong to the Ninja Steel Rangers. Even though it is from the Morphin Grid, its use is shared amongst everyone. The civilians indirectly share the Morphin Grid's power through the Rangers' protection. The Ninja Steel powers are created by the unity of Ninjetti powers and should not be abused. The powers of the Ninja Steel is channeled by the Rangers' willpower and creativity to protect the people and take down evil. Sarah and Preston learned this important lesson. While going out in the city, they saw a lot of street performers. Everyone was doing a great job except for a street magician who was not that impressive. Sarah felt bad for the man and urged Preston to help him with his magic show. The street magician gained a lot of traction and earned a lot of money through Preston's help. The other rangers saw the commotion and were quite upset by the two. Sarah rebuttals that Preston is using his powers for good, to help the poor man to make a living. Adam then asked if Sarah told Preston to perform for that street magician or is it for their own ego. The two later learned a lesson not to easily use their powers when the two tired themselves from the performance. They were unable to fight to face off against Madame Odious's new Nylock monster. This time, not even the Astro Zord could have helped them, and they lost it in battle, taken by Madame Odious. The new Nylock was about to crush the Rangers. Galvanax appeared and started to attack her monster. She was locked in a Galvanax's dimension after being berated for going over his head. He needs Adam to energize all the ninja steel first. This time, Madame Odious hit the Astro Zord star she stole away from Galvanax. Sarah was heartbroken when she realized her Astro Star was stolen. Preston blames himself for wasting his powers on something so trivial. Adam and the group tried to ease the sadness from the two and Boom calmed the team down. While comforting Sarah, Calvin shared his feelings with her. He admires her and finds her amazing. Unlike him, he feels very insecure about his place as a ranger. The reason why Calvin is always the first one to suggest celebrating the victories, partying and cracking jokes is because he is very ditzy and airheaded at times, making a lot of mistakes. After Rocky, Calvin's father has injured himself during a martial arts tournament. He was inspired by engineering textbooks and pursued a degree in engineering. Calvin looked up to his father as a top car designer, which inspired Calvin to be a gearhead. Calvin never saw Rocky as a ranger, thus Calvin's path felt like he was destined to be a car designer, not some superhero. He didn't even return for Forever Red. Sarah then approached Boom and asked him how the mentors could help Calvin. Upon hearing this, Boom decided there should be a way to help Calvin with his insecurities. Knowing Sarah is a curious learner, Adam suggests maybe she may try to work on the teleporter to get her mind off losing the Astro Zord. Meanwhile, Calvin, Haley, and Brody took Preston out for ice cream to cheer him up as well, since he was quite upset for losing the Astro Zord. After TJ was teleported there, the teleporter has not been working well. 
While fiddling with the teleporter with Boom using two blank ninja stars as batteries, she did not know what happened, it was like lightning hitting the bottle. The teleporter exploded, and out came Alien Ranger Red, Aruko, and Ninja Storm Red, Shane. Adam greeted the Red Rangers in delight. Boom noted that it has been a while since he saw Adam genuinely smiling like he is happy ever since they were teleported there. Boom told the Rangers, these blank ninja stars are just temporarily powering up the veterans, same as TJ. Their time in this dimension will be short before they are teleported back to their dimensions. But because the two are ninjas, they are able to channel their ninja powers through the stars and grant them powers. Ha! Ninja steal! Ranger reveal! Ha!